Hello, Dr. Brad Hulsebus here, and welcome to another edition of Ask the Chiropractor. Ask the Chiropractor is my little podcast that I do. When someone has a question about chiropractic or chiropractic care, I try to answer. I'm a chiropractor here in Rockford, Illinois. I'm a proud graduate of Palmer College of Chiropractic, and I'm happy to be the team chiropractor of the Rockford Ice Hogs. Let's dive into it. Thanks for tuning in another edition of Ask the Chiropractor. I'm Dr. Brent Olsobus, and I appreciate you tuning in. Now, I was recently asked a question about what's going on in my part of the world. I live in Rockford, Illinois, Northern Illinois. And what we're seeing here recently is we're seeing a real shortage of healthcare providers. We have three hospitals in our system. And what's happening is we used to have tons of ear, nose, store doctors, tons of this kind of doctor, tons of that kind of doctor. And over the last couple of years, we get less and less and less. Now, the, the why could be a long conversation. Why do we have less of everything going on? That could be a long conversation. It's probably political. And I say, if you get political, I'm going to lose half of you as my audience. So let's not get political. Let's just talk about the facts the way they are. They're not here. We have a shortage. Patients are minor trying to get in to see doctors, and they're being told three, four months out. I myself wanted to go see a little spot. I wanted to get a check of dermatologist. My doctor told me, don't worry about it. You're fine. You're overreacting. But even if you wanted to go, he told me it'd be six months before I could see a dermatologist. We have a lack of healthcare providers going on in the world right now. So why does a chiropractor bring that up? Because I'm a primary healthcare provider. In the state of Illinois, we are primary healthcare providers. And I'm sure it's the same in most states. I'm an expert on Illinois law. I am not an expert on New Mexico, Montana, New Jersey, Arizona law. I am an expert on Illinois law. So if you're watching this somewhere else and you want to know whether what I'm saying holds true in your state, call your state association to go to chiropractic.org. That's our national association and somebody there can answer those questions for you. So let me dive into Illinois stuff. And if you're listening from out of state, like I said, chiropractic.org, they'll help you out there. Tell them I sent you. All right. So let's talk a little bit about the Benefits of having a chiropractor. One, you get chiropractic care. I think that's awesome. I'm a chiropractor, though I might be a little biased. But yeah, having a chiropractor to take over, you get to know you, your care and you get to know you very well. It's very good. The one thing that we see a lot of that I'm seeing more than ever is that people are relying on me to do more than chiropractic. They're coming to me all the time with questions about other areas of health that maybe aren't chiropractic. Can't, questions about cancer treatments. Can't, questions about hernia surgeries. Questions about... I used to be a lot of orthopedic stuff. Is my knee bad enough to get it looked at? Is my elbow, this, is this going on? But now we're getting questions about, hey, can you look at this rash? Is this something I should worry about? We get asked those questions, not because, part of it, I hope it's because they value our opinion as primary healthcare providers. But we get asked that question a lot because they can't get in anywhere else. And they know if they go to the hospital or the emergency room, it's going to be a long wait. And they want to know, is this something I need to take care of now or is I'm going to take care of later? As your chiropractor, we get to know you. We get to understand you as a person. We get to know how you react and don't act. I have patients that used to see my grandpa, saw my dad for 20-some years, and now I've seen them for 20-some years. Man, I know when something's wrong with them when they come in. I know when something's not right. I had one guy come in one time, and his whole face was limp, and they said, dude, what's going on? I think you've had a stroke. This is before I saw him. Don't give me that garbage about the chiropractor and the stroke stuff. I won't tolerate it. But he, he said, what's going on? I said, you've, got, you've had a stroke. And he said, no, I've got Bell's palsy. I go, no, 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 no. Go back to the, go back to the hospital. You've had, Bell, you, you've had a stroke. This is not Bell's palsy. I know you. Something's really wrong. He went back to the hospital and the hospital sent him home again told him it was Bell's palsy for a second time. This time he called his general practitioner, his family medical doctor. I, the medical doctor called me up and said, you've taken care of this guy since 1954 between your grandpa, your dad, and you? I said, yes. And you think he's had a stroke? I said, yes. They said, well, I'm going to make him go back to the hospital. Nobody knows him better than you. He's had a stroke. And sure enough, he did have a stroke. We were able to get him care that third time he went in. So your chiropractor gets to know you. Your chiropractor gets to know when something's not right with you. Your chiropractor just gets to know you like a family member or a co-worker or somebody at work. They get to, we get to know you. There was recently a study that came out from medical doctors that said, whatever you do, never badmouth the chiropractor because the patient's got more loyalty to their chiropractor than they do you. And if you badmouth the chiropractor, they'll quit you before they quit their chiropractor. And it's because we get to know them. You, you might see a medical doctor hopefully only once a year for a yearly physical, but you see your chiropractor once, twice, three times a month in order to keep up. So we get to know you, we get to know how your body functions and behaves. And we get to, we study, we study a lot. A lot of people don't understand how much there's a lot of jokes about our education and it always drives me nuts when I hear it because it's just not true. Matter of fact, in Illinois, 
We are primary healthcare providers. We're not even licensed chiropractors in Illinois. We're licensed physicians, just like the family doctor. We have the same licensing board, same regula regulatory board as the medical doctors. Matter of fact, our regulatory board and our, and our licensing board actually have a chiropractor that sits on them. That's how they justify the chiropractic part. So in Illinois, the medical doctor has a chiropractor in charge of their licensure. A lot of people don't know that. So in Illinois, I can do anything a medical, medical doctor can do, but I cannot prescribe medicine and I cannot do surgery. That's the limitations on my license. So we are very much primary health care providers. Now, on an honest note, that doesn't mean your insurance will cover anything that I say. <laughs> But we are licensed. I, I can send you off for blood work. I can send you off for MRIs, CAT scans, anything like that I think needs to be done. And I can help manage your case for anything that we seem to get done. Anything that we seem that needs to get done. But I don't believe that the medical doctors or the insurance companies would ever allow me to do half of this stuff. But we do have that knowledge. When we go to college, we go into chiropractic school, most of us with a bachelor's of science or a bachelor's of biology, just like a medical doctor does. Same classes, same classrooms. Matter of fact, when I was in college, I took the pre-med course work. And I take the exact same classes as my friends who are medical physicians. And then we go to chiropractic college. And chiropractic college is actually more classroom hours than a medical degree. So here we have in Rockford, we have UIC School of Medicine. And I spent more time at Palmer College in a classroom than the students who graduate that school sit in classroom going to school. Now the difference is once they graduate, they go to a hospital and spend a couple of years on rotations, following doctors and seeing stuff firsthand. Whereas chiropractors, we do our first 300 patient visits at the school while we're studying at the same time. So we graduate ready to go. They graduate ready to go and learn a little bit more before they get their license. But they're required to take so many national boards as are we. And then passing fail rate in the national boards in Illinois are the exact same for medical doctors and chiropractors. We're held to the exact same standard of education in order to get our license as our medical friends. So in Illinois, do medical doctors have more education than chiropractors? Or are held to the exact same standards? So I'd say it's very, very similar to what we have. Now, I spend more time learning how to adjust the spine. They spend more time learning how to prescribe medicine. I spend more time looking at your posture, teaching how to sit, stand, and move around. They spend more time learning how to do surgeries. We have our areas of specialties, but when it comes to biology, chemistry, when it comes to human anatomy, gross anatomy, neurology, physiology, system diagnosis, we, the hours are very similar to what we do at the same time. So your chiropractor is very much educated in how to help you figure out what's now. This one also goes back to the chiropractic school they went to. And of course, everyone knows I'm biased towards Palmer College because that's where I went to school and therefore it's the best. <laughs> but you want to look at that too, where your chiropractor went to college. But for the most part, when you get your license, get your degree, that's what we have to learn. That's what we have to do. So I'm very familiar. When you lay down on the table and I adjust you, I have to know whether your lower back pain is coming from a kidney stone or your lower back, correct? And so if I don't learn about renal function, I don't know about kidney stones, and therefore I want to be able to tell you that. But we have that ability to learn that and be able to tell you the differences. I have to know whether your shoulder pain is coming from pancreas, from a pancreas problem, or is it, or excuse me, a gallbladder problem, or is it really a shoulder issue? And then is your shoulder injured or is your neck injured? Which one of the two is it? So we do all this stuff. Hey, I'm having chest pain. Are you having a heart attack? Or do you need a good adjustment to set your rib back on the place? These are all things that we have to know for your safety. And only that just to be better doctors. So if you have a chiropractor as a doctor, you have better access to primary health care. And here in Rockford, we're friends with all these doctors because we've had 20 years of working with the Ice Hogs, uh, other colleges, and not only that, but we've worked with other sports teams. So we actually know all these doctors from working with them hand in hand. Saturday night, I was at the Ice Hog game sitting next to an ER doctor, a family physician, an orthopedic surgeon, a dentist. We're all sitting there together. And so when I call these doctors and tell them, I get a patient needs to get in right away. We get you in right away because they know I wouldn't be wasting their time with something unless it was really something going on. So we've had patients come in and said, I'm supposed to go see, I don't know, a plastic surgeon and, and I can't get in for three months. And I think it's really bad. Your plastic surgeon you're supposed to see is also the ice hog plastic surgeon. I just send them a text and be like, yo, this person's pretty bad. And anything you can do to speed it up, it'd be greatly appreciated. And usually we get a phone call, not always, but usually we get a phone call, get them in sooner. Or if I have somebody with a bad shoulder, that's easy. Doctor, the shoulder doctors in Rockford and I are all really good friends, even different healthcare systems. It's really easy for me to get you in there if I think it need be. So having a relationship with a chiropractor will give you better access to primary health when there's a shortage of medical doctors out there right now to take care of you. Not only that, but we can help guide you, give you ideas and suggestions. I've sent many people to Madison in their hospital here in order to follow up with their care. So right now, there's never been a better time to have a chiropractor 
not just for chiropractic care, but because there's nobody else. There's less people around to help you. I shouldn't say nobody. There's a lot less around to help you. And the chiropractor may be able to steer you in the right way or give you some tips or suggestions in order to avoid the next step. So if you don't have a chiropractor, you haven't started chiropractic care, that might be a reason. Just go in and say, hey, I don't really have a back issue like a typical new patient would have. I just want to get into chiropractic care so I have a wellness doctor I can work with. All right, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. If you have a question for chiropractic or chiropractor, only ask a chiropractor. We're the only ones that actually know the answer. If you have a question you'd like to have me answer sometime, go to rockforddc.com. That's R-O-C-K-F-O-R-D-D-C.com and leave me a message there. I'll get it. Maybe next time you'll be the question of the week. Thanks, everybody. Mm-hmm.